How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Elvis Drunks and Reviews. Today, we're looking at another Athern Genesis product. We are looking at an Athern Genesis 2.0, whoopsies, Southern Pacific 944 CW, and this is number 8107. And like I said, this is Genesis 2.0, and it also has sound in it, Tsunami 2, and LED lighting. So, this is going to be quite a very fun video. I think it's in the Genesis 75th anniversary box. So let's go ahead and get it open. I hope everybody's having a good day today. I'm pretty happy. This came in just today, so I'm very happy about that. So as you can see, we have a Horizon Hobby um, information about the uh, about their warranty, their one-year lim limited warranty. There was a sign-up for Athen News inside there, but I already threw it away just in, when I was inspecting the, the locomotive. We have a exploded diagram sheet, and it's actually three pages big. Because there's a lot of, because 2.0, there's a lot of different parts to this locomotive. But here's just the first one. As you can see, it's quite big, and they have three of them, like I said. And this one's just a list of all the parts that are on this locomotive, including all the mechanical and everything that, that's necessary to make this locomotive go. And finally, we have a diesel locomotive operator's manual and sound guide. So this has, like, things on where to lubricate the locomotive as well as the sound functions so those will be useful when we're doing the sound demo of the of the of the video piece of foam here and there's our locomotive all nicely safely wrapped inside of its protective packaging and i'm just gonna be quiet now as i get this out blister package right here or blister whatever they call this clear plastic shell Two pieces of foam, kind of funky. One's thicker than the other. I do not know why. We have a bag, a really crushed up bag of uh, spare roller end cap bearings, which is nice. That's a very nice feature of this locomotive. Open her up. And there she is, all nicely stored. And as you can see, there are truck stabilizers inside the inside here. There they are. I think Atherin got that idea from scale trains, but it could be wrong. And we have pieces of foam here. So let's get that out. Pull this piece of foam out too. It's stuck on something. I don't know what it's stuck on. I'm just gonna do this. There we go. All right, so now let's get into some history. And now on to some history. Now, I actually have done some history on the Dash 9 when I reviewed a Scale Trains UP Dash 9 that came out a couple, I want to say 2023. Um, but anyway, just if you're curious, the Dash 9 was the successor to the Dash 8. Built by General Electric from 1993 to 2004, the Dash 944CW and its variants were the definitive North American mainline freight locomotives of their time with an impressive 3,668 units built. Now that's from Athern, taken directly from Athern's PDF of this run, so it could I could be wrong, and Athern could be wrong, I'm not sure. Now, Dash 9s have been sold not to just um, American railroads, but they've been sold to Canadian, Brazil, Brazilian, and Australian uh, uh, companies as well, which is very cool. The Dash 9 is an international locomotive. So our locomotive here, SP-8107, was built in May of 1994, and she is one of the earlier variants of the Dash 9. She has some slightly different features to, say, some of the later variants of the Dash 9. And so she served the SP for two years, and then in the SP-UP merger of 1996, she was renumbered to UP-9571, and somewhere in the 2000s she was repainted, to the UP paint scheme, and she's and she started venerably with the UP once again. And um, the last picture I could find of her was in 2018, where she was sitting in the storage lines in the UP's North Platte yard in Nebraska, and that was back in 2018. So I can either assume this locomotive is still there or it has been scrapped. I do not believe it was one of the few Dash Nines that was sent to Wabtec to become an AC rebuild. But anyway, so now that we have our history out of the way, let's get into some details, starting with the front. 
Alrighty, so we're currently looking at the front of the locomotive, starting at the top and working our way down the bottom as we always do. Starting at the top here, we have a white grab iron right here just above the number boards. Speaking of the number boards, there they are. I do believe they light up when the locomotive is in motion. We'll have to find out when the uh, locomotive is going through its sound demo and a little running demonstration. Here we have some grab irons just above the windshields, and you can see that they are colored red. Now, in this run of uh, Dash 9s, they did make a few other ones that had all gray grab irons so this is a this and one more of the locomotives is unique so that's really cool actually focusing on the nose here now you can actually see grab irons on the nose as well as the sand filler hatches on either side of the uh, of these white grab irons right here here is the headlight that does operate when the locomotive is going in a forward motion we have some grab irons that lead from the top of the nose down to the walkway here and there is a window on the door as well as sp p on the door and s on just the locomotive we have some handrails that lead down to the walkway right here. Here is our walkway handrails right here, as well as a little chain to keep you from falling through that little hole. Focusing on the front of here, as we can, there we go. You can see the ditch lights, as well as just behind it, there's the walkway light, which is very nice. And excuse that little bright up of the, of the camera. There is the anti-climber right there. Some MU hoses and cables, as well as a socket right there. The ditch lights, they also do, when they are on, they flash when the horn is being um, pressed which is a really cool feature. If I'm correct, SP was the only Western Railway to have uh, flashing ditch lights on the locomotives, but I could be wrong. Please let me know if I am wrong in the comments. I greatly appreciate that. Here is our coupler cup bar. You can see it. And here is, speaking of couplers, here is our coupler, as well as an air brake hose and three MU cables on either side of this SP rock plow. And you can see some numbers, one, two, and three, and three, two, and one. It does indicate the number of the uh, MU cables right there. All right, so now let's look at the rear of the locomotive. Looking at the rear of the locomotive, you can see a grab iron just up here on the top of the locomotive. Speaking of uh, headlights, here is our headlight right there. We have a sand filler hatch right here and some more like panels and such right, right here. There is some hand, um, grab irons that work the way from the top of the locomotive down to the walkway. Here is the number of the locomotive, 8107. Another walkway light right here, as well as some electrical boxes. Handrails once again, some more MU sockets right here. There's not really an anti-climber, unfortunately. Here's our, so you can see the coupler cup bar a lot better now. And here's the Atherns McHenry coupler that a lot of people don't like. I don't mind them. Uh, I think they're still pretty strong in general, but most people end up swapping all the couplers out for metal KD couplers because they are a lot stronger and I completely understand that. More MU hoses right here, three on the other side, and you can see that one has been moved. I don't think that was intentional. That one just might be stuck on something. That's exactly what it is, but you know what? It looks it look it makes it look interesting because it won't bend down, but that's okay. And I believe there are actually a couple of uh, yes, there are a couple of hand grab irons right here, which is very fascinating to me. And there's also a little walkway step right here. All right, so now let's get into some side detail. All righty, so we're looking at the conductor side of the cab right now. As you can see, this is the uh, scarlet of, of the scarlet and red bloody nose scheme that the SP had. Now, really quickly, I want to point out this locomotive is not an AC traction. It is DC traction, so there's no large electrical boxes over here to fight with the voltage and all that. That is an, a that is an air conditioning box right there. We have an F to indicate this is the front of the locomotive. Here are some steps that lead up to the front of the locomotive. You can see our phenomenal truck detail, as well as like a lot of brakes and springs and this little speed indicator, which is a lot more, it's better at indicating your speed, just basing it off of GPS. We have some more electrical boxes right here. There's the number on the cab right there, 8107. You can see the somewhat blurred um, windows of the cab. And there's a sunshade right here, and this is a side mirror. There is the bell right there, and there is a jack pad right here. Moving the locomotive forward, we have the amazing Southern Pacific Speed Lettering logo that was adopted in the 90s. We have some white grab irons right here, some lift rings, one right here, one right here. There is an exhaust vent, or just a vent, most likely a vent. There is a, here's our fuel tank. There's some buttons and switches and all, and this is a fuel tank indicator to tell you how full the fuel tank actually is. Up here, we have a Nathan P3 horn as well as the exhaust stack of the Dash 9. Moving quite along right here, you can see it's see-through. Those vents are see-through. That is a uh, staple of Genesis 2.0. I do not believe regular Genesis does that, so basically the top-of-the-line stuff is going to have the better stuff, and it just makes sense. 
We have another jack pad right here. And as you can see, a real chain instead of a plastic one, which is very nice. And you can see the rotating end cap right there, which is very nice indeed. Some safety labels on the radiator section right here, as well as the brake wheel, which is very nice. And some illegible writing right here, which I believe is probably also some safety um, labels as well. On the engineer's side, excuse the crow, he's being very uh, um, irresponsible today, or being very un very not so useful. As you can see, we have a builder's plate right there, right here. You can see it says GE, and it'll tell you when the locomotive was built, uh, how many wheels it has, how many axles it has, its horsepower, and a few other lovely things. And as you can see, this whole side right here is just, it's just covered in safety uh, warning labels like here, here, right there, right there, right there, and there's just more along this way. As we move the locomotive this way, you can see another fuel tank indicator right here of how much fuel you have, and here are the air tank reservoirs. Uh, prior to the Dash 8s, they used to be uh, on like either side of the fuel tank, one on each side of the, uh, behind and front of the fuel tank. And we have some air compressors as well, as we focus on them as well. There we go. And as you can see, more safety labels as we move along, and just a lot of safety. <laughs> There's a lot of safety labels on this, which, I mean, it, it's good. SP was concerned about safety. All right, so now let's look at the roof of the locomotive. All right, now that we come onto the roof of the locomotive, we now come to my two problems with this locomotive. As you can clearly see, there are some weird looking marks right here on the roof of the cab. And as you see, there is a safety tread on there, which is really nice. But I presume that these are glue marks, which that shouldn't be on a Genesis 2.0 locomotive. That should not be there. This is top of the line. I paid over $300 for this sucker, so I should not be having that kind of problem. But here we have some GPS and antenna arrays right here. And also here's my other issue with this. The cab, the roof of the cab does not come off like on the uh, SD60M Triclops that we reviewed or the SD80 or a few or a few other locomotives that we have reviewed like the SD70 ACU. I don't know why Athen chose not to let the roof be magnetic and come off, which is a real shame because it means you have to make you have to do a harder job of putting care uh, crew in there. Anyway, Moving on, we have some more boxes or like compartments up here, and you can see there actually are latches right there and some more safety labels. We'll now get a better look at that Nathan P3 horn right here, which is very cool, as well as the exhaust stack. And we get to actually look at the top of the, the radiator section here with the grates, which is very nice. And there's that grab iron that I did mention earlier. All right, so now let's get into the sound demo of this locomotive. Alrighty, so we currently have the locomotive up on the test track, and as you can see, she's in a winter wonderland, but actually it's not going to be a winter wonderland here in a few months. It's actually going to become a desert uh, scene, which is going to be, re I'm really excited about how it's going to turn out. As you can see, it's, we got the plaster down, we've got a lot done. If you want pictures, I'm going to be posting them to Elvis uh Photography at my Instagram, so you can check out there. Anyway, let's not waste any time, and let's uh, put some power onto the track here, and let's hear the startup sequence. Now, as you can hear, it's kind of quiet, but that's okay. It doesn't need to be extremely loud to be perfect. So let's go ahead and throw on the main headlight. There you go, design now for you. Let's put on the ditch light, which is F5 on uh, for Tsunami. There you go. F1 is the bell. F2 is a long horn, and watch the ditch lights, they do flash. Now, F3 is a short horn. So now let's try to do the, uh, part, the, sorry, the crossing sequence here. And there you go. And you see the dish lights will stop flashing there. There they are. They stop flashing. Let's go ahead and uh, turn on the bell. And that's throw it into reverse, sort of go past the camera here. Always go leave the camera. Oh, a little too fast. All right, she's gonna head right towards you guys now, very slowly here. 
She has a nice crawling speed actually, which is quite nice. She'll be coming past you here in a little in a little bit. There she is in frame. She's a little blurry right now, but that's okay. She will come into frame here shortly. There she is. It's a very nice model, I will say that. Towards the camera, and we go into my final thoughts. I always remember where the focus is on this. He was right there. <laughs> one more shot of the ditch lights there on as well. Let's give it one more shot of the flashing mechanism. Now let's turn off the ditch lights, turn off the headlight, throw her into idle, or braking, and power off. So now let's get into my final thoughts. Actually, really quickly, I was just going over the sound speaker, sorry, some the, um, I was going over some of the functions, the sound functions, and um, there is cab chatter, so let's hit F7, that is F7 cab chatter. So as you can see, that was a hot box detector going off, telling this locomotive that the train it has, there's no defects, no nothing. Let's see if there's another one in there. I believe that was, yep, that is uh, the crew talking to dispatch right there. And I do apologize if you can't really hear that. It's also really quiet for me, which I'm quite a little disappointed in. That's quite interesting indeed. All right, so now let's actually get into my final thoughts. Alrighty, so apart from those two little issues that I had on the roof of the locomotive, I still really do, and I really, really like this locomotive. I highly recommend you, you get one if you can. There still are a lot of Dash 9s available on um, the Western Depot and also Lombard Hobbies. I got mine at LombardHobbies.com. They will be a link in the description if you want to go check them out. But uh, yeah, like I said, I highly recommend you get one because I really enjoy this locomotive. Now, yes, it's, this sounds a little quiet, but you can always adjust that when you're programming it yourself. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Also subscribe if you have not, and I hit the notification bell to know when I upload. I upload on Mondays and Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so check in on those days and at that time to see what I have to upload next. Um, things are going to kind of slow down now. I've just got a new job, so I'm trying to um, work things out. So there might there will definitely be a slowdown of content for a, little, uh, for a few weeks because I have I just won't have time to order things or go out and buy things. So I hope you'll understand. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.